Disclaimer: For those of you who wish to get vaccinated, please get vaccinated. For those of you who don't wish to get vaccinated, please don't get vaccinated. For those of you who wish to coerce people into getting vaccinated, get fucked. <laughs> this is what cafe culture now looks like in Paris. Police roaming the streets, checking that people have a license to dine. <laughs> Patrons need to show proof of vaccination, immunity or a negative test before taking a seat at their favourite cafe. Most people comply, but not everyone's happy about it. I really don't know what this is. We're sitting at an outdoor table. There's only two of us. There's no one around. It's digital absurdistan. What a great use of police resources, checking innocent people at the cafe while they drink their lattes. There must be no other crime in France. Yes, around the world, mandatory vaccinations and so-called vaccine passports are on the agenda. Unfortunately, they just don't work, at least not from a medical perspective. If the goal is to create a police state, then they work wonders, but not so much if the goal is to stop the spread. The World Health Organization state, when it's your turn, take your vaccine. All approved COVID-19 vaccines have been tested and all provide a high degree of protection against getting seriously ill and dying from the disease. It is important to be vaccinated as soon as possible and not wait. This way we build immunity in our communities faster and can get back to our normal lives. Oh, can we? We can all get back to normal, can we? Well, not so fast. Bring in Iceland. Iceland COVID-19 outbreak. Cases spike in world's most vaccinated country. With vaccination rates well above 80%, Iceland has become a case study for the rest of the world. But the Delta strain is causing problems. Iceland is experiencing its worst COVID-19 pandemic outbreak. That's despite near total vaccination levels. And what Delta's doing there may now be a sign of things to come for Australia. The small island nation of 357,000 citizens has become a case study of the effectiveness of vaccination against the Delta mutation. Some 96% of all Icelandic women over 16 have received at least one vaccine dose. The figure for men is about 90%. In total, 86% of the population has been fully vaccinated. It is an outstanding result. So much so, the Reykjavik government felt they had this pandemic beaten. In June, they rolled back social distancing, mask and travel restrictions. But those restrictions have been reimposed as a COVID-19 Delta outbreak has sent case numbers soaring. And even with a significantly reduced rate of severe illness, the explosive outbreak is seriously straining the tiny nation's health system. A month ago, the country had just two active COVID-19 cases. Now the sparsely populated island has more than 1,590 active cases. About 20 are in hospital, with a quarter of those in intensive care. While that doesn't sound like many, in such a small country, even that number puts a strain on its healthcare resources. A significant number of people are at risk of needing hospitalisation due to COVID-19 at the moment, Dr. Joseph Dorta told reporters. This Icelandic news is backed up in other reports. According to the Iceland Review, the oldest English-language Icelandic news website, COVID-19 in Iceland. Vaccination has not led to herd immunity, says chief epidemiologist. While data shows vaccination is reducing the rate of serious illness due to COVID-19 in Iceland, the country's chief epidemiologist uh, Thorolf Gudnason says it has not led to the herd immunity that experts hoped for. In the past two to three weeks, the Delta variant has outstripped all others in Iceland and it has become clear that vaccinated people can easily contract it as well as spread it to others, Tholfer stated in a briefing this morning. So if Australia thinks that by introducing vaccine passports and only allowing vaccinated people to go to the cinema, that's somehow going to stop COVID in its tracks? Well, the evidence suggests otherwise. Here's some news coming out of merry old England. Early signs COVID-19 vaccines may not stop Delta transmission, England says. London, August 6th, Reuters. There are early signs that people who have been vaccinated against COVID-19 may be able to transmit the Delta variant of the virus as easily as those who have not, 
scientists at Public Health England PHE said on Friday. The findings chime with those the US Centers for Disease Control and Prevention, which last week raised concerns that vaccinated people infected with Delta could, unlike with other variants, readily transmit it. Here's Massachusetts in the US. Doesn't it look pretty? And here's the CDC report from August 6th. Outbreak of SARS-CoV-2 infections, including COVID-19 vaccine breakthrough infections associated with large public gatherings, Barnstable County, Massachusetts, July 2021. In July 2021, following multiple large public events in Barnstable County, Massachusetts, town, 469 COVID-19 cases were identified among Massachusetts residents who had travelled to the town during July 3rd to 17th. 346 74%, occurred in fully vaccinated persons. Testing identified the Delta variant in 90% of specimens from 133 patients. Cycle threshold values were similar among specimens from patients who were fully vaccinated and those who were not. More British news. This is from the BBC from today. COVID-19. More than 75% of UK adults now double jabbed. Boris Johnson described the milestone in the vaccine rollout as a huge national achievement. But Oxford Vaccine Group Director Professor Sir Andrew Pollard has warned that herd immunity is not a possibility. Health Secretary Sajid Javid said the vaccines were allowing us to reconnect with the things we love, while Vaccines Minister Nadhim Zahawi said it had been phenomenal to see firsthand the enthusiasm of the British public for the vaccines. But Sir Andrew told MPs the idea of herd immunity was mythical with the Delta variant, now dominant in the UK, still infecting people who had been vaccinated. From Al Jazeera, in England, hundreds of vaccinated people hospitalised with Delta. Public health experts warn that vaccines do not eliminate all risk amid early signs jabs may not stop Delta transmission. Here's one from the Baltimore Sun. I went to a party with 14 other vaccinated people. 11 of us got COVID. By Alan Massey. I was sitting on an examination table at an urgent care clinic in Timonium, giving my history to a physician's assistant. An hour later, she would call me to confirm that I was positive for COVID-19. Given the way that I felt, it was what I expected. But it wasn't supposed to happen. I've been fully vaccinated for months. Five days earlier, I had gone to a house party in Montgomery County. There were 15 adults there, all of us fully vaccinated. The next day, our host started to feel sick. The day after that, she tested positive for COVID-19. She let all of us know right away. I wasn't too worried. It was bad luck for my friend, but surely she wasn't that contagious. Surely all of us were immune. I'd been sitting across the room from her. I figured I'd stay home and isolate from my family for a few days, and that would be that. And even that seemed like overkill. I'm an epidemiologist at a major medical research university which has a dedicated COVID exposure hotline for staff. I called it and workers said I didn't need to do anything. Then I started to hear that a few other people who had been at the party were getting sick. Then a few more. At this point, 11 of the 15 have tested positive for COVID. Fortunately, none of us seems to be seriously ill. When fully vaccinated people experience so-called breakthrough infection, they tend not to progress to serious disease requiring hospitalisation, and I expect that will be the case for us. But I can tell you that even a mild case of COVID-19 is pretty miserable. I've had fever, chills and muscle aches, and I've been weak enough that I can barely get out of bed. I don't wish this on anybody. As much as I hate me and my fully vaccinated friends being sick, I've been thinking about what our little outbreak among us means for the rest of us. Here's what I've concluded. State and local health departments and the CDC need to do a better job collecting and reporting data on breakthrough infections. The CDC announced in May that it was only going to collect data on breakthrough infections that led to hospitalisation or death, which are fortunately rare. But that means that outbreaks like ours will fly under the radar. Any of us could infect others, apparently including other vaccinated people. It's not clear if our group got sick because of a particularly virulent variant, because the vaccine is wearing off, or for some other reason. Without good data, we'll never know. So it looks like the CDC are intentionally under-reporting these cases. 
probably to artificially inflate the unvaccinated figures in order to convince people that the COVID vaccines are much better than they really are. Hopefully Americans see through this deception. Anyway, politicians and health experts in Australia and around the world are trying to convince their citizens that vaccine passports and mandatory vaccination are necessary in order to stop the spread. But that's just a lie. There's enough evidence to suggest that the current lineup of vaccines are simply not stopping transmission. As I said in the Sydney Morning Herald yesterday, is the herd immunity dream dead? It's a pipe dream, says Professor Fiona Russell, a leading vaccine expert based at the University of Melbourne, and it was never an attainable goal. It was bandied about a lot, but given the nature of the virus, it is just not possible. Or, as always forthright Kirby Institute virologist Greg Dorr puts it, the data is in. Herd immunity is not attainable with the Delta variant, even if we manage to vaccinate 90% of those over 16. But our Australian leaders are still pushing their made-up statistics. New South Wales Premier Gladys Berejiklian is telling us that if we just get to 70% vaccination rate, we'll be able to open up again by October. She said the Doherty Report, which was published to advise on the national plan to transition Australia's national COVID response, asserted 70% was the magic number. Do you believe her? Do you believe in magic? Do you believe that 70% is the magic number? Tell that to Iceland. As I said at the start, if you want to get vaccinated, get vaccinated. If you don't, don't. But don't go around spreading lies that if we all get vaccinated, then we'll somehow magically stop COVID. It just hasn't happened in real life.